Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 30 of my fitness database series. And if you haven't heard me say this in parts 1 through 29, well, it's a database tutorial. Fitness just happens to be what we're doing. So all these tips and tricks are going to be valid for any database you might be building. And today what we're going to do is we're going to take this combo box we built yesterday so we can pick an item, click a button, and have this item put up here in the log automatically. We don't want to be typing stuff, right? That's no, that we, no. But before we do that, there's one little issue I want to address first. Let's say in your food list, you've got quotes around something like this, apple quote, red delicious, right? Now, the way we have our food log set up is that'll, that'll, that shows up there just fine. And if you just type in red, it shows up just fine. But what happens if you put in here quote red oh look at that even though that's in there it breaks the string because of the way we're assembling it okay so if you come in here and take a look right come back in here in the on change event that we did yesterday Whoop, let me resize this there we go um what we're basically doing is we're looking inside the string here the, the text in the box and we're, we're building a where string out of it. Now, if this where string happens to include a double quotes, it's gonna break this string. It's gonna, it's gonna basically terminate the string and it's not gonna work. So what we have to do is, you know how you have to take a, a normal set of double quotes and turn them into double double quotes inside a string? Well, we basically have to do that here. If the user types in double quotes, we have to change it, it's called escaping it. You have to do this with SQL all the time, especially on websites, you gotta watch out for it because hackers can do something called an SQL injection attack. I'm not gonna teach you all about that now, but Google it, you'll see what I'm talking about. But basically we have to intercept this string here and if there is a double quote in it, make it a double double quote. So I'm just gonna make another variable up here, we'll call it S as a string. I'm gonna say S equals food combo dot text. All right, now S equals replace it, it looks like this. It's four quotes here, comma, and then quote, double quote, double quote, quote there. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? So basically we're saying if there is a single double quote, not a single double quote, if there's one double quote anywhere in the string, I want you to replace it with two double quotes. And since you reference a double quote inside a string with double double quotes, that's what it's got to look like. <laughs> You're basically turning this into this and that whole thing's inside of strings. I know it's confusing. It confuses me sometimes. Um, but now we just got to take all of these S's and replace food combo dot text everywhere down here with S. That's all we got to do. See? Right there here. And I think that's everything. Yep. And the rest of it should work great. All right. Now save it. Debug compile once in a while. Ooh, oh, oh, replace. Oh, what? Oh, duh. Anybody see the see the see the the error? It says argument not optional. What does that mean? It's a teaching moment because I was stupid because I was talking. Um, we need to put s in here too. You need you need to put the string you're looking inside of what to replace and then replace it with. Okay. Debug compile. <laughs> close it. Close it. Close it. Open it. And now if I come in here and type in red uh, with a quote in front of it, let's say, quote red, see, it still works because we're escaping that double quote. Okay? All right, so that's taken care of. Oh, one more thing. I like to mention all the things I did off camera so no one gets confused. I made this form wider. This was only why out to, out to about here. I just slid everything over more because I was using this myself this afternoon. I'm like, that's not big enough. So I had to make it bigger. Okay. So we've got our combo box. Now we're gonna add a little button here that the user's gonna click on to put the stuff up top here. So let's go to design view. I'll grab a button, copy, click, paste, slide it over here. I'm just gonna put a plus in the button for the caption. Double click right there, slide it up here. I think someone's beaming in, hold on. Oh yeah. We'll name this guy, let's see here. All, let's call this the add food button, BTN. 
All right, right click, build event, comes back in here. Now, since we're going to be adding multiple food items later when we add meals, right? Because what is a meal? A meal is a collection of a bunch of food items, okay? Since we're going to be having to loop through those items in a meal later, let's turn this into a subroutine right off the bat. So here we're just adding one, but when we add the meals later, we can just loop through this sub we're going to write right now. Get it? All right, so we're going to say in here, we're going to just say add food item to log, and then we'll send it the ID, which this ID happens to be in the food combo. Now, what is add food item to log? Well, we're going to create that right above here. And I'm going to make it public so anybody can use it. And if, if later on, if we need to make it global, we can move it into a module. But for now, this is fine sitting here. Let's do that. Oh, public sub, sorry. Copy and paste the name. And we're going to send into it food ID as a long. Alrighty. Now, we need two record sets, one to read, one to write. And since I'm going to be using multiple record sets in the same subroutine, I'm going to declare a database object too. So dim db as a database. And then we're going to have rs food as a record set. That's going to be from the food table that I'm reading from. And then rs log as a record set. And that's going to be the food log table that I'm writing to. Okay, now let's set up our shell. Let's set up the outside of the donut. And then later on, we'll put the jelly inside the donut. So I like to always put the shell together first. All right, so set db equals current db. And yes, I've done this so many times I could do it in my sleep. Set rs food. This is the one we're reading from equals db dot open record set. And then our SQL statement select star from food t where food ID equals the food ID I sent in. Okay, now, theoretically, they're only getting to this place by picking it in a combo box. So there's there really isn't any chance for that not to exist. But just in case we'll use a while loop in case maybe you got a multi user set up and someone deletes a record or whatever, you could check to make sure that the record set isn't empty here, it shouldn't be. All right, so that's what we're reading from. Now, how about the one we're writing to? Set rs log equals db dot open record set. And we only need to put in here food log t because we're adding to it. Okay. Now, technically, we shouldn't need this, but I like to put this loop here anyways. So we're going to say while not rs food dot eof, do some stuff rs food dot move next, right? Technically, don't need it. But we're going to future proof in case in the future you decide to send in some different parameters and there could be multiple food items. Right. We we might do this with the meal later. I haven't decided yet. We could do it here with a loop. But as of now, that's fine, because like I said, if, if the, for some reason the food ID doesn't exist, this will kill it. All right. It just it'll it'll start off at EOF and it'll never move and it'll, it'll never go into the loop. All right. When that's our while end. Now we got to close up shop. So rs food dot close, rs log dot close, set rs food equals nothing, right? If you set it, you got to forget it and set rs log equals nothing. That's the end of it. So that's the that's the outside of our donut. And now we just got to put in the jelly filling in here. Now, if you have a hard time remembering how to do all this record set loop stuff, I do them all the time. So I've been doing these for years. I can easily remember all this stuff. But if you can't, I got it on a mouse pad <laughs> in the merch store. Here you go. It'll be, right, it'll be right in front of you the whole time. All right. But anyways, now it's time to put the filling in the donut, which is what we're actually doing. So we're going to add a new record. So it's rs log dot add new. And then toward the bottom, we're going to go rs log dot update. Okay. Add a new record and then update it. Okay. We'll get rid of some of these blank lines here. Okay. Now, inside the add new and the update, I like the indent inside there. You don't have to, but it just makes things easier to read, I think. Okay. Now, this is where it's also handy to have the field list right in front of your face. So what I do is I like to go to the tables. I'll put them in design view and then maybe drop those into paint or something. So let's go to um, like the food log we're adding to, right? So design this. Here's all the fields and you go, or you could just leave, leave the table design open. In fact, I got to make my window a little bit bigger so I can stretch this out more. All right. There's all the fields from the food log table. 
And you can copy and paste stuff too. And they're going, they're getting copied from the food T design view. And there's the fields for that. And if you got room, just put them side by side. So I can slide these over here. You got your code over here. All right. So, and that's why it's, it's handy to have them both like that side by side. And you can at least see them like that. And then put your code window like that. All right. Now you can see here, so coming from here, going to there. Okay. So first thing on the list, the food ID, well, we sent that in, right? So RS log, could you use a with statement here? Yeah, you could use a with statement. I, I don't often use them. I use them sometimes. But in this case, I'm going to skip the with because it can, they can get confusing too with the with. You don't remember what record set you with, right? So RS log food ID equals food ID. We just sent it into the, to the subroutine. So that's good. All right, now next is the user ID. I'm gonna leave that alone for now. We've got a default value of one in the table. We'll deal with that later. We're gonna do a whole set of, set of lessons on the multi-user stuff. Um, all right, the food date time, that's an easy one. RS log food, food date time, that equals right now. Now, the food time text, that's a tricky one. Because the food time text, if you remember, we got a whole bunch of code that sets that. Now, where is that located? Let's go find that. So that's in here. I believe that's in the after update event for this guy. Let's see, events after update. Okay, update food date times right here. Okay, so this is what formats the, uh, the food time text into whatever time format you wanna see. Now, I don't wanna have this format in two places because if I change it later, let's say I wanna change it for manual entry, then I gotta change it everywhere else. So let's make our own function that handles that formatting. That way, if I wanna change it later, I can just, I only have to change it in one spot. This is the kind of stuff you gotta think about. You don't wanna duplicate stuff like this. Just like you don't wanna duplicate code. So right here, let's make a public function. And I'm gonna call it format food log time. We'll send a time, date time value into it as date, and we'll return a string which is what's happening down here, right? We're formatting this food date time as a string and we're storing that in the display this field right here, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna say is format food log time, which is the value of this function that it's going to return as a string equals that, but now we're just gonna put D in here. So D comes in it gets formatted and it gets returned as this string. So now down here, food time text equals that function. Whoops, I got too much in there. <laughs> this function of food date time. See how that works? So food date time is the actual date time value. All right, we're gonna send it up to this function. It's gonna return a string formatted like that and put it in this thing here. Same thing, exact same thing as it just happened a minute ago. I didn't change the functionality at all. But now I can call format food log time from my button. Make sense, right? So we're gonna copy this and go back where we were before. It's easier just to go back through the button here. There we go. All right, add item to food log. I think it's right up here, yep. Okay, so the next step is that food time text, RS log food time text equals that function with now in it. Or if you really care about to the second, I would send this value in there because I mean, it's only a split second, but there's a chance it could be a different second. If that matters to you, it doesn't matter to me. Okay, see what we're working with here? All right, so what do we got so far? So, so far it's gonna add that record and so far we got the food ID, the date time and the food time text. Let's, I like to stop occasionally and just make sure it's working. So debug compile. All right, let's close it, close it, close it, save it. Yes, we can uh, leave the, yeah, let's close these for now too because we're gonna come back to this in a minute. All right, let's make sure it's working. Open this up, drop this down. I'm gonna pick avocado, I'm gonna hit plus. All right, now nothing appeared to happen because we're not refreshing our, we're not requerying our records at all. But if I hit requery, Oh, look at that. There's a new item right there. See it? And it is 5.14 p.m. Let's move this down so we can see it better. Okay. And if you look in the food log table, there it is right there. We got the time in there and we got the proper food time text in there. All right. 
Now, we got all these other fields to go. We're going to get that in there in just a minute. Well, when I say just a minute, it's going to be just a minute for me. But for you, you got to wait till Monday for the rest of it. Uh, it's currently Thursday, the 28th of August, 2025. Tomorrow's going to be Quick Queries Friday. Oh, actually, Monday is a holiday here. Monday is Labor Day. So no video then. So you have to wait till Tuesday, Tuesday, September 2nd. Unless you're a member, then you can watch it right now because I'm going to keep recording for a little while tonight too. So I got, I got a bunch more stuff I want to do. But everyone else, I'll see you on Tuesday. So that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. Have a nice weekend. I'll see you Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.